I'm Dan Edmonds and this is a Chevrolet Silverado ZR2 Bison. It's an off-road version of the Silverado that's been lifted two inches. It's also got Multimatic DSSV spool valve dampers, locking front and rear differentials, a 6.2 liter V8, and a lot of AEV parts like this bumper and those 18 inch wheels which are wrapped with 33 inch tires. Anyway, I'm going to pull off one of those tires and have a look at the suspension and then put it up my RTI ramp to see how well the Bison's suspension flexes in an off-road situation. Well, here's the front end of the ZR2 Bison, and like a regular Silverado, it's a double wishbone front suspension or dual control arm. Uh, in this case, the upper control arm is aluminum and the knuckle is aluminum. Of course, we have the coilover Multimatic DSSV spool valve damper right here, and uh, some other interesting stuff that we'll look at when I get in a little closer. So here is the upper control arm. Uh, you can see that it's leaning down towards the back, which is typical of anti-dive suspension geometry. You can also see that the, the upper ball joint is pretty far back compared to the lower one, so that, that's where the caster is coming from. And of course, this spring here and the blue color of the damper, those two are unique to the ZR2, which has a lifted suspension with pretty trick shock absorbers. So the Multimatic DSSV dampers are unique in that they don't use the usual deflective discs to generate damping force. They use what's called spool valves. And to make that work, they put the spool valves in a secondary chamber. There's actually a third chamber that is a remote reservoir. So there's actually three chambers here in a triangular array. Uh, and of course, now we can also see the hydroformed lower control arm, and it's got this uh, stiffening bracket across the, uh, the width of it to uh, give it more strength without adding a lot more weight. Handheld here, here is the chamber we've been looking at on the front side of the Multimatic damper. The other one is visible here on the back. And so that makes a triangular array that takes up quite a bit of space here. A little bit of a gap, but uh, yeah, you don't often see piggyback on any front shocks because there's a space issue, but they've decided to deal with it here. All I can say is these remote chambers, one for the valves and one for the oil reservoir, make this packaging really tight. I mean, that gap to the axle and to the CV boot is tiny, so any debris that gets up in there, I don't know, that looks like it could cause problems. Of course, this is full left lock, so it's kind of exaggerated, but still, it's tight. Both legs of the lower control arm have one of these adjusters. It's interesting, it's more of a pin and slot type adjuster as opposed to the cam and fence type that we see on a lot of other trucks. Uh, both legs have one of these, and so getting caster and camber correct at the same time is a little bit of a balancing act uh, because, uh, yeah, you change one thing and it affects the other, so you gotta get them both just right. But alignment techs are pretty good at doing that. So here is the lower control arm, and the ball joint is right above this bolt here. You can see that the two legs go off in different directions. Neither one of them is in line with the hub, so that's why adjusting caster and camber is a bit of a back and forth iterative process. So from this angle, we can see the stabilizer bar really clearly. Here is the pivot and the bar itself and the end with a link that drops down and attaches with a nut to the lower control arm right here. In this point, there is no disconnecting mechanism here. It's just not really a great way to do it manually either. So here's the whole length of the lower control arm. You can see the inner pivot, 
the ball joints right here. This is the little nub that contacts the, the knuckle at full lock to take the pressure off the steering rack. So this is really the steering stop. And of course, this is the bolt that holds the coil over to the lower control arm. And that is about, I wanna say 65% of the way out from the inner pivot. So that's about the motion ratio of the coilover. The stabilizer bar is just a little bit further outboard than that, so it's closer to 70%. The brakes are pretty robust. Four piston fixed caliper brakes. There's one piston here and here and another two on the back. You can kind of see the lobes where they're at. Uh, I like this open window design because there's a just a pin here and a little pin here. You pull those and you can take these larger pins out and slide the pads right out of this open window. Uh, of course, the rotors themselves are pretty thick, ventilated, and I've always liked these studs that GM uses with the unthreaded portion that just makes it easier to hang the wheel and get the, the nut started. Especially nice when your wheels weigh as much as these do. I'm gonna put one on the scale and we'll figure out what that number is here in just a few minutes. All right, this is a LT27570R18 Goodyear Wrangler Territory MT mud terrain tire on an 18 inch AEV wheel unique to the Bison. And one of them weighs 81.4 pounds. Well, that's it for this close up look at the front suspension of the Silverado ZR2 Bison. I'm gonna put this tire on and move to the back. So as you can see, the Silverado ZR2 Bison has the same rear suspension, in theory, as a regular Silverado. It's leaf spring, although the characteristics of the leaf, and there's a, a block we'll see here in a minute, plus the multi-matic dampers make it very unique. So here is the leaf spring pack. It has four main leaves and one helper spring, which you can see is not in full contact right now because it's not fully loaded. This point right here is the normal spring seat location on most other Silverado 1500s, but as you can see, there's a lifting block in here that basically gives this suspension its lift. Here's the urethane bump stop. We've been looking at this since we took the wheel off. This is the surface that it makes contact with. It's flat surface behind the uh, the spring pack here, but they've built this up with an extra spacer. So the gap here is specific to the ZR2 Bison so that this bump stop engages when they want it to. So interestingly, this has a Berlin eye. This is the front eye, the front mounting point of the leaf spring, which you have to remember is a control arm, you know, a longitudinal control arm that basically defines the position of the rear axle. And so how this is wrapped can have an effect on the toe change as the spring compresses, which is particularly important in a corner when the outside is loaded and under compression. This main leaf comes in kind of equal with a mounting point. It doesn't go to the top or directly to the bottom. So that means that when it compresses, there won't be much toe change back here. So we have another set of multi-matic dampers here in the rear. And as you can see, they're inverted, so all of the heavy stuff, the body of the shock, is up near the top, and this is pretty much just a shaft, and there's probably a secondary bump stop down in here underneath this dust boot, which is here to keep stones from scratching up the shaft. But this part of the shock doesn't weigh much, so the unsprung weight isn't very high. This shows one of the things that I'm not particularly crazy about. It's the low position of the lower shock mount here and over here. Um, they're pretty far inboard from the tire and wheel assembly. So when you're negotiating a rocky trail, you have to keep in mind three points of potential contact, the two shocks plus the pumpkin. I mean, you can see they put a rock guard on the diff, but the shocks, well, you just have to be careful. This here is what we call uh, an underslung shackle. In other words, the spring is the one at the top, and this is the mounting point to the frame. So if you put a longer shackle on here, like people used to do to jack up 60s 
muscle cars, it'll actually lower the truck. So you don't want to do that uh, in an off-road version. And you really don't want to mess with it here at all. That was never a great way to change the height of vehicles, even back in the day. So the rear brake here is a single piston sliding caliper. These are the two pins on which it slides. The caliper's right here, and it's got an electronic actuator for the parking brake, and also this pad wear sensor. The rotors themselves are ventilated, and uh, you don't need huge brakes in the back of any vehicle, even a truck, because the weight pitches towards the front axle under braking, and most of the weight's up there anyway. When you're towing, well, they always recommend that the trailer has its own brakes. Well, that's about it for this close-up look at the ZR2 Bison's suspension. I'm going to put the rear tire back on, take it in the backyard, and run it up my RTI ramp to see how well this off-road suspension articulates. Well, as you can see, I have plenty of clearance here to uh, go up the ramp, so no problem here. This AEV bumper has uh, some signature cutouts that the ZR2 Colorado also has. You can see that the, the skid plate underneath the radiator is a little bit lower, and that's where the approach angle measurement comes from. But here in front of the tires, this is cut out pretty dramatically. and. Obviously, if you're going to put your tire on a rock, you'd want that. And it's not just for something like this ramp test. Well, you can see what's about to happen here. I've got my 20 degree RTI ramp. And all I need to do now is drive up, see how far it'll go before the left rear tire starts to come off the ground, and then make some measurements and come up with an RTI score. I think we're pretty close. Doesn't just go right in. But I can lift the wheel with one hand just enough to get it in or out. So that's good. Well, I've got my tools of the trade for the measurement here. First and foremost is this square, which goes right there on the ramp. And that is the center of the hub. That's the center of the hub right there. So we'll measure that. And it's 22 and 3 eighths. So 22 and 3 eighths is 22.375. So we'll just abbreviate that. I know that the wheelbase of this truck is 147.5. And so now it's time to do a little math on the calculator. So I'm going to take 22 and 3 eighths and divide it by the sine of 20, and I get 65.42. So 65.42 divided by 147.5 is 0.4435. We're going to multiply that by 1,000 because that's what you do with these things. And you get 444. So, so let's put this score into a little perspective. I've also measured a Colorado ZR2 Bison. And it does a little better. And that's not surprising because this is a mid-sized truck and this is a full-size truck. And it's also worth pointing out, this is the original Colorado ZR2, not the new one. Uh, I haven't measured that yet, so I don't know where that's going to land. But certainly, compared to the Silverado, its smaller dimensions help. And it's also a special wide track version that needs its own fenders because of the extra suspension width. And that adds flex because there's more travel in those uh, longer control arms uh, that are attached to that suspension. So that's actually totally makes sense to me. Now, another truck with long travel, 
wide track suspension is the Raptor, but this takes that concept to the extreme. The Raptor is really going after more of a desert race kind of philosophy as opposed to an overlanding uh, backcountry exploration, which is, you know, especially with the, the AEV components that make the bison, the bison, uh, you know, that's kind of underscoring what it's all about. So the fact that this is worse, this is worse than this isn't a huge deal uh, because, you know, this doesn't have the wide track suspension uh, and it doesn't have particularly long travel. Uh, you know, it's better to compare it to something like the TRD Pro Tundra, which I have measured. And this is the new one with a coil sprung rear axle. And you can see it, it doesn't do as well. Actually, this number actually uh, disappointed me when I measured it, but this puts the disappointment into context because these two are really kind of geared towards the same customer. Anyway, that's what the suspension looks like on the Silverado ZR2 Bison, and this is how it flexes. So uh, if you have any comments, put them in the comments. And as ever, this is Dan Edmonds saying thanks for watching.